So these are Garmin's latest flagship solar powered sports watches, the Phoenix 8 Solar and the Enduro 3. And both of these are extremely capable watches that can track nearly every sport under the sun. They both have full offline topo maps. They have the best in class routing and navigation when it comes to watch. They have the same heart rate sensor. They both get great battery life. And the list kind of goes on and on in terms of the similarities. So why does one cost $900 and the other cost $1,200? Well, although they do share a lot in common, there are some distinct differences between these two, which may make you want one over the other. And in this video, I want to go over all those differences, both big and small, to help you decide which one's going to be right for you. And if you do happen to find the information in this video to be useful, do me a quick favor and just hit that like button down below. It's a small thing that you can do that will help this video and the channel out quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Okay, so first up, let's talk about size. And in this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about the 51 millimeter Phoenix 8 Solar versus the Enduro 3, which only comes in a 51 millimeter case. So I think that's going to be the most apples to apples comparison. But do note that the Phoenix 8 Solar does also have a 47 millimeter version. But the main reasons I do want to focus on the 51 millimeter versions here is that it is going to be the most direct comparison when we're talking about weight as well as battery life. Plus, the 51 millimeter Phoenix 8 Solar is the version that I've been testing back to back with the Enduro 3 just to see how they actually compare. Now, although both of these have a 51 millimeter diameter case, they actually differ in terms of thickness where the Enduro 3 is actually just ever so slightly thicker. And the reason for this is that the Enduro 3 has a bigger battery with roughly 5% more capacity. And the other thing that's different about the case is that they went with a resin back on the Enduro 3 versus the metal back on the Phoenix 8 Solar. And this helps reduce the weight where for the cases themselves, the Enduro 3 weighs about 57 grams and the Phoenix 8 Solar 51 millimeter version weighs about 67 grams. And 10 grams may not seem like that much on paper, but that is about a 15% weight savings. Then if you factor in the bands where the Phoenix 8 Solar comes with a silicone band and the Enduro 3 comes with their UltraFit band, then you're talking about a, like a 30% difference in weight. And I'm a pretty big fan of the UltraFit bands, by the way. And in fact, that's actually what I used on my Epix Pro for the entire time I was using that watch. And that's also what I use on the Phoenix 8 AMOLED right here. I just find it to be a more comfortable than the silicone band. And I think it's just a little bit better suited for sports. The only drawback with the UltraFit band is that it does retain a bit of moisture after it gets wet, like after a shower or in the pool or something like that, but it dries out within about like 15 or 20 minutes or so. But when it comes to overall comfort and fit, even though these do have nearly the same case size, the Enduro 3 is just going to be a more comfortable watch overall, and that's due to both the weight as well as the band. And it's kind of interesting with the Enduro 3 where it is a large watch, but it doesn't actually feel large on the wrist, if that makes any sense. So next up, let's talk about the displays, the solar charging, as well as the bezels. Yep, those are actually different between these two. So for the displays themselves, so these are actually gonna be the same, where both of these have a 1.4 inch memory and pixel transflective display with 280 by 280 pixels. So these are gonna be the more efficient counterparts of the AMOLED display that's found in the Phoenix 8 AMOLED. And if you are curious on a comparison of the Phoenix 8 AMOLED versus the Phoenix 8 Solar, I've actually got another video coming up on exactly that subject. So make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes comes out. And you know, getting back to these two watches specifically, so both of these have solar charging, of course, and they also both come with Garmin's latest solar charging technology, which is going to be much more efficient than before. But it's not just much more efficient, it actually looks a lot better too. So the previous versions had kind of a red hue to the solar panels, where these new panels are now pretty much all black, which doesn't just make them more efficient, but also helps them kind of just blend into the case and the display for a more seamless look. And another thing that's different about this new solar technology that's found on these two watches is that these don't have the translucent layer on top of the display that was found on previous versions, which was basically about 10% efficient in collecting solar power. And the reason they kind of ditched this is to increase the clarity of the display since that extra layer wasn't actually 100% clear. But since they were able to dramatically increase the efficiency with this new solar ring, they kind of just decided to ditch that. And I definitely do find it to be more clear than before. But where these actually differ with the solar charging is that the Enduro 3 solar solar charging ring has about double the surface area of the Phoenix 8 solar. So this is where it's able to harness more juice from the sun. And how they did this is actually by reducing the size of the bezel on the Enduro 3, which allows for that bigger ring. The bezel still is totally enough to protect it though. And it also does have a lip to protect the display, but they just kind of had to reduce the size of the bezel to get more solar charging surface area. So since we're on the topic of solar charging, let's not talk about battery life. So both of these get great battery life, even without solar charging, where you can get like almost a month or more just using 
using them as a smartwatch, and then much more, of course, with solar. And then for recording outdoor activities, even in the highest accuracy multiband mode, you can go record like a two plus day long activity with either of these. So there's really no problem with either of these in the battery life department. But the Enduro 3 does take that up quite a notch, actually quite a few notches. And that's not only due to the larger battery, but also the larger solar panels. And that's really where with the Enduro 3, with enough solar exposure, that can easily double, if not nearly triple the smartwatch battery life. And also has significant gains across the board with recording outdoor activities with potentially unlimited battery life in its expedition mode. And that kind of insane battery life was only previously seen on their Instinct lineup. So how do some of those battery life numbers actually hold up in real life, especially with the solar charging? Well, it's a little bit challenging to test just because it's not about wearing one watch on one wrist and then one watch on the other. And the reason for this is sun exposure depends on your orientation to the sun during activity. It could be getting different levels of charge depending on if you're facing east, west, south, or north. So I had to test this in a few different ways. So first off, to get a baseline, I wore one watch on each wrist, but I actually had them covered just to see how they perform without any sun exposure since that can be a variable. And then next up, I wore one watch on each wrist, but this time uncovered. But of course, there's likely going to be differences in the amount of exposure depending on my direction. And then lastly, I broke the cardinal rule of watch testing by wearing both watches on one arm, just so the sun exposure would be the same being on the same arm. And that's something I almost never do just because that can have an effect on heart rate accuracy and also sometimes GPS accuracy. But in this case, I just wanted to test the battery life and I wasn't necessarily testing GPS or heart rate on those rides. So for the first test of just covering them up so it didn't get any sun, they both pretty much nailed it in terms of the battery life estimates. And then next up, let's take a look at a ride where I had one watch on each wrist while exposed to the sun. And we have the Enduro 3 with about a 91 hour runtime and the Phoenix 8 Solar having about an 89 hour runtime. But then on this next test, it was far different at 72 hours for the Phoenix 8 Solar and then a crazy 216 hours on the Enduro 3. So kind of interesting results, but again, not really an accurate test since both watches could be getting different levels of sun exposure being on different wrists. So just to eliminate eliminate that variable if we have both of them on the same arm. Here's where the Phoenix 8 Solar 51 millimeter version was getting about a 75 hour runtime on this ride where the Enduro 3 got about 112 hour runtime. So definitely a significant difference there and well within their battery life claims. But the larger solar charging area on the Enduro 3 does seem to make a pretty big impact. Both of them still get great battery life even with them covered without any sun. But if we factor in that sun exposure, that's where it makes a really big difference between these two. And then the next big difference other than battery life is that the Phoenix 8 Solar has a speaker and microphone, and this provides some convenient functionality, mainly on the smartwatch side of things. So first thing that you can do is that you can actually take calls on the watch itself as long as your phone is in range. And you know, I'm not necessarily the kind of person that does take calls on the watch, but I actually did find this very useful the other day when my phone was in my backpack when I was hiking, where I did get a call and I didn't have to dig out my phone to actually speak. And I found that to be pretty convenient. And then you can also use the microphone on the Phoenix 8 Solar to use the voice assistant of your choice, whether you're on an iPhone or an Android phone. So here's where you can say something like call mom or something like that. And then when it comes to text messages, so this is actually where the microphone can come into play as well. So if you're on an Android phone with either of these, you'll be able to reply to text with predefined responses. And you can also set up custom responses in Garmin Connect. However, if you're on an iPhone, unfortunately, you won't be able to reply with an actual text message. And that's due to the fact that Apple is locking down iMessage functionality to just Apple Watches. However, this is where that microphone can actually come into play on the Phoenix 8 Solar, where you can sort of reply to a text on an iPhone. And the reason for this is that Garmin's kind of sidestepping iMessage and instead leveraging Siri to send the text. And you can do this just by calling on the voice assistant function, but they also have a convenient way to do this directly from the text itself. And the same thing goes, by the way, if you're on an Android phone where you can use Google Assistant to send a text as well. And then another feature that you get with the microphone functionality are voice commands. And this is something that I do use for stuff like, let's say, setting time timers and alarms where all I have to do is long press the upper right hand button and say something like set an alarm for 6 a.m. which is just much more convenient than accessing the controls menu then going to alarms and then setting the alarm manually. And there's also some other stuff that you can do with it too like showing the weather, starting and stopping activity, showing the map, and it's a pretty good list of things that you actually can do with it. And the usefulness of the voice commands I think will just have to do with how you typically use your watch. Some things like let's say starting a run or any other activity that you commonly do is probably just going to be a lot faster by using buttons. But let's say for activities that you don't commonly use, like let's say I wanted to go ice skating or something like that. Well, that's not in my standard list of activity profile. So finding that profile and then starting it with button presses would probably take longer than just using the voice command in that case.
And then another feature that you can do with the microphone is that you can actually take voice notes on the watch itself. So this could definitely be convenient for quickly being able to record your thoughts and whatever comes to mind when you're wandering around, which, hey, we definitely all come with our best ideas or maybe even our best Strava titles at the most random times, like even in the shower. And what's nice about these notes too is that they are geotagged, so you can kind of have a reference location on when you actually took this note. And then on the speaker side of things, you can actually listen to music that you have stored on the watch from the speaker itself. And as you can imagine, the quality of the speaker is about the quality that you may expect out of a speaker from a watch. So it's like a only if I really, really need to listen to that Taylor Swift song right now sort of thing. But there are also some other nice things about that speaker. Like there's actually different tones and chimes for different stuff like notifications for calls and texts, starting and saving activities, turn alerts during navigation. There's quite a few things actually. And it's just a little bit more friendly than the beeper on the Enduro 3 where those are pretty much just one tone. But the last major difference between the Enduro 3 and the Phoenix 8 Solar is that the Phoenix 8 Solar has dive functionality where you can track recreational diving down to 40 meters. Now one thing that helps with that dive functionality is that they've actually redesigned the entire case with the Phoenix 8s with what they call leak proof buttons where the case is completely sealed off instead of having gaskets like on the Enduro 3. Now the Enduro 3 still has plenty of water resistance though with the buttons it has that has gaskets. It's just more that those gaskets could actually degrade over time and I'm talking like many Many, many, many years down the road if they're repeatedly used underwater. So I've used buttons both above water and underwater on all the Garmin watches I've tested and worn over the many years, and I haven't had any problems with any of them. It's just more that the Phoenix 8 it is built to last longer when exposed to that kind of use. Another thing that's interesting though about these different buttons on these watches though is that there's actually a distinctly different feel to the leak proof buttons on the Phoenix 8 versus any previous Garmin watch. The buttons on the Enduro 3 are kind of like this nice positive springy feel and almost feel clicky. The buttons on the Phoenix 8, they don't have as positive a feel where if you're comparing these kind of like side by side, they can almost feel a little bit mushy. It's not that the buttons are bad on the Phoenix 8, but it does take some getting used to. But when it comes to the actual dive functionality, so this allows for recreational scuba diving down to 40 meters, and it also does come with a free diving sport profile as well, which they call apnea diving. Other than that though, these actually have the same sport profiles, including snorkeling by the way, on both of these. And then another interesting difference I found between the Phoenix 8 Solar and the Enduro 3 is the flashlight or torch where both of these do have four different brightness levels as well as a red mode but if we take a really close look at the lenses well the lens on the Enduro 3 is a little bit wider than the Phoenix 8 Solar and I'm thinking that's likely due to the mic port on the Phoenix 8. But another thing that's kind of interesting is that the lens itself is a little bit more clear on the Phoenix 8 Solar so the Phoenix 8 does appear a little bit brighter due to that clearer lens and honestly this is just a minor detail in the whole scheme of things and both of these still work great but it's just kind of something interesting I noticed that I wanted to share. And then when it comes to the watch watch faces, so the selection here is nearly the same between the two, where they both have five different watch faces that are the same between the two, but the Phoenix 8 does come with two additional watch faces versus the Enduro 3. Okay, so with all that, which one of these is actually right for you? So both of these watches get ridiculously good battery life, but around 20% more or so out of the Enduro 3 across the board without solar charging. However, if you can benefit from the solar charging, like if you get a lot of sun exposure, that larger solar panel on the Enduro 3 does make a considerable difference. So for battery life, I basically consider how much sun you actually have where you live or where you adventure. But when it comes to features, well, the Phoenix 8 is gonna be the clear winner here. What has everything that the Enduro 3 comes with, but also has the speaker and microphone as well as the dive functionality. With the speaker and microphone, for me, it is nice to have those different tones and stuff like that, but honestly, I pretty much only use the voice commands feature and not so much the other features that those things can do. And then with the dive functionality, well, that could definitely be the deciding factor for you. However, for wearability, that goes the Enduro 3 since it's lighter than the Phoenix 8, in addition to the fact that it comes with their UltraFit band. But of course, you can go ahead and get the UltraFit band in addition to the silicone band to kind of lighten up the Phoenix 8 solar. But then we finally have to talk about price, which I'd say it's probably the biggest thing to consider between these two since there's a $300 difference with the 51 millimeter Phoenix 8 Solar running $1,200 and the Enduro 3 running $900. And I feel that the Enduro 3 is priced really well for what it offers where with the Phoenix 8 Solar, I think it's a little bit of a stretch, but at the same time, those additional features of the Phoenix 8 Solar could be the deciding factor for you. Anyhow, if you have any other questions about the differences between these two, feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section down below. And if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and also hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming up. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.